Guys, today I want to talk to you about best practices in basement insulation. Obviously, the goal is to prevent mold. A basement remodel project is one of the most popular choices when choosing a home improvement project. It's, it seems like we get hired all the time to do these. In fact, you can potentially achieve up to 70% return on your investment when you do it correctly. Basements have become unique challenges when considering your choice of insulation. And that's due to the below grade nature of basements and the, mostly the biggest concern there is moisture and the end result is mold. So um, moisture in basements can be attributed pretty much to a couple or several sources. Interior sources, exterior sources, and then obviously water vapor. Um, Interior, to, interior sources, pretty sim, similar to you know poorly vented water, um, water leaks or uh, dryer vents and stuff like that, humidifiers. Groundwater for exterior stuff, poor drainage, water propagating down towards the porous surfaces or cracks of the foundation, improper pitch, lack of gutters, poorly directed gutters. All of that can lead to large quantities of liquid water pooling and going up against your foundation, um, foundation footings or your walls. Additionally, new construction concrete can have a significant source of moisture as well, and it can take years to completely reach an equi equilibrium state, depending on climate and conditions. And then there's water vapor. Water vapor is the most challenging to combat. Uh, it's a gaseous state that can diffuse through solid materials. Moisture and water movement require the use of proper application of a vapor barrier and that's to prevent moisture movement and prevent that mold growth that we're trying to avoid. Mold is a microorganism that can grow in almost anything um, if moist enough. So mold spores basically feed three things or, or they need three things to thrive, to grow and thrive. Uh, food, could be cotton, leather, drywall, wood, paper products, drywall mostly, um, water, obviously moisture, and then lastly, optimal temperatures. Temperatures between 30 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a huge range, and that's the range that we have basements in a lot of times, we're heating them. Take away one ingredient and mold will not grow. Now dehumidification is a tool that we've seen used in basements for years, and it treats the problem but does not solve it. So how do we prevent mold? Well, we do it through proper insulation and vapor barriers. All right, basements have unique conditions when compared to the rest or above ground, above ground dwelling, right? So below grade basements are always subjected to exterior environments, like it's got the sand, soil, and, and that area is oftentimes close to 100% humidity. Vapor will diffuse from an area of high humidity to low humidity, and as a result, you will get water vapor wanting to basically move into that conditioned basement space. This unidirectional movement of water vapor provides a continuously damp environment that's favorable for mold growth. Um, hence the need for a vapor barrier. So, and then this temperature, we, di we didn't really get into temperature, but during the winter months, in moist, uh, most climates, I should say, the home the home experiences heat loss through exterior walls from he, uh, heated interior, uh, interior to exterior, right? Cold exterior. In a below grade basement, thermal gradient is almost always directed outside, outward, as the temperature below the frost line remains relatively constant, significantly cooler than the basement space. So even in the summer, in cooler regions, there is a heat transfer from the basement into the ground. Additionally, the basement space typically contains a rim joist up in the, in the upper area, and, and that's above ground. That's just above the grade. So the rim joists are often overlooked and under-insulated, and it's, a, it's an under-insulated location in many homes. When it's under-insulated, these areas can develop frost uh, from warm air as it condenses on them in the wintertime, and that's gonna create mold as well. Interesting fact about rim joists. Despite it being a relatively small area, recent studies have shown that up to 19% of your home's energy costs could be lost to an uninsulated rim joist. Um, and the, the link for that, the source for that is in the article. Um, here's a great solution to all of these problems, guys. The best practice here is to use closed cell spray foam. Now, 
Closed cell spray foam is a mixture comp comprising of isocyanate, hopefully I said that right, and polyol resin mix. And it, it all comes out at the tip of an applicator. The mixture quickly adheres to the surface that it's sprayed onto and it rapidly expands. High density closed cell mixtures have a closed cellular structure that's impervious to water and air movement. Perfect vapor barrier. The foam is rigid once dry and has a fantastic R value. It's like R7 per inch. Due to the closed cell nature of, of the foam, it acts as a vapor barrier and will prevent humid air from condensing on cold surfaces. So this, along with roughly the double value of rating the R value, is one of the biggest advantages of, um, of cell, uh, spray foam. However, closed cell spray foam is one of the most expensive forms of insulation on the market. And that's the biggest complaint most people have. We do not recommend using fiberglass bat or open cell foam in basements. Both of those insulations require additional vapor barrier applications, which can often add to cost, but are often not adequate. They don't, they're not done right. Rigid foam boards can serve as a vapor barrier and thermal insulation. However, they can be difficult to achieve 100% coverage between interior construction materials and utilities along the foundation of the wall, pipes and electrical boxes and things like that. Small irregular spaces like rim joists can be extremely difficult to seal with foam board insulation. You still need spray foam. Spray foam can be used to cover all those irregular surfaces. They can achieve complete coverage and insulation layers. Um, spray foam insulation is a job that's best left for professionals, period. It's, it's becoming, for instance, those spray foam kits are becoming very popular in the United States, and they're a convenient option for an enthusiastic DIYer. However, the mixture balance between the two chemicals has to be perfect, and to an untrained applicator, the untrained eye, you may not notice an incorrect balance. Pro contractors who have decided to use spray foam kits, they need to learn to recognize improper mixtures of the curing of the foam. Improper mixing, it can lead to prolonged periods of potentially harmful and uncomfortable off-gassing. Given the cost of materials and unforeseen potential costs of a poor insulation application, it's best to leave spray foam to professionals, to trained, certified professionals. Let's talk a little bit about best practice installation. In a typical basement studded out basement, the walls, you wanna stud those walls one inch off the foundation. Why one inch? Because leaving a one inch gap, closed cell spray foam can then be applied and get between the wood and the foundation wall. It's gonna create a thermal break and an uninterrupted vapor barrier. So you can go more than one inch, but one inch is the minimum. There are three things to consider when using spray foam. Spray foam off gases and as a byproduct of that chemical reaction between the two components that mix together. So you have to know, re remember, you've gotta wear proper PPE, you gotta wear an organic vapor respirator and a face shield. Um, everybody needs to wear that if you're applying that. It is recommended that residents in the home, if you're using spray foam, they vacate for a full 24 hours after application. That's to allow for the off-gassing process to complete. Also, you need to do proper preparation, which includes ensuring that the substrate temperature is the proper temperature, 60 degrees is great, um, and the humidity levels are perfect in that sprayed space. Um, can't be too moist. And you need to take the time to cover everything so it's not sprayed, because the overspray gets everywhere. Closed cell foam is a high performance solution that seals and insulates the entire building envelope. It is energy efficient. It doesn't sag in place like fiberglass does over time or others. It seals gaps, cracks, and other surfaces that contribute to heat loss and air leaks. It's a vapor barrier and over, uh, guys look, please check out the article because this video is just a quick summary. Over the next month, we'll have several articles and videos addressing spray foam best practices, froth packs, rigid insulation, rigid board, polyiso, and insulating rim joists. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing or give us a thumbs up. I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you here next time at Concord Carpenter.